so this is a new route for you not been on this one before not for you Mr Chauffeur um, we are on our way on this rather cool and not so bright day to collect some straw the person that we're collecting it from doesn't appear to know we're coming I messaged her yesterday and said can we come and get some and she said yes as long as you let me know so I've let her know but she's not sent the message and I'm just gonna turn up otherwise we'll be waiting all day um, so yeah we're gonna pick up some straw and then um, we will go on and visit our friends Gail and JP who live quite close by um, which is where our story began so they live in the house that we we swapped houses with them back in 2005 um, and they went to our house in Devon which was about a third of the size of the house that they live in so we'll, they'll go out there afterwards for a cup of tea I suspect there'll be cake I might have some and be damned should really take cake if we're going to visit maybe we'll go and visit the, the bakery and get some cake first Today is Tuesday. Well, that's new. All that um, factory over there, all the warehousing's new. It's obviously owned by or rented out by some agricultural or seed supplier. I suspect all these silos are new. The dark grey ones, I think, are older ones, but those are new silver ones. So yeah, this is much bigger than when we first used to. I mean, you know, left big after 250 meters onto the D83 and then leave the next roundabout at the fourth exit. Been coming here a long time. It's changed a lot. So this is now turn left and then leave the next roundabout at the fourth exit. Chapelle Vivière, I think. Can't remember whether it's got a la in front of it. Please take the fourth exit. We never come here. We only come here to pass through. I don't know what's here. I don't think there's a I don't think there's a cafe, so there's a shop here, a small supermarket or you know, mini market. But there's no cafe. I don't think now turn off at the second on the right in Street de Moulet. So in this direction, we will be passing um, the, we'll see the um, the nuclear power station from quite, um, get Please quite a viewpoint. the road for six kilometers. Which I like. I like that sort of stuff on the landscape. Some people don't. <laughs> but they stand out much more when the sky is blue and they're um, blending in a bit over there um, against the pale clouds. Mr. Cockrell had his last antibiotic this morning. Um, he's he's bruised in all the places he's had injections, and I'm hopeful that I didn't bruise him this time. I won't be checking because I won't be giving him another injection. But um, I realised that the needle, 
was not really suitable for subcutaneous it was more it was longer than it needed to have been but I only put it in a little way this time so it just needs to get under his skin so this is Val de Vienne which is actually where we're headed although we've got another 10 minute journey yet but Val de Vienne is the valley by the Vienne which is the river There's a small village at the bottom here called Kuborn, which is right next to the, overlooking the nuclear power station. It doesn't seem to bother people here in the way that it does in the UK. Um, I'm not sure why. Um, it doesn't really, I have to admit, it doesn't really bother me living as close as we live. Maybe that's because that's the way it is. <laughs> um, I don't know. So I think it's notable that, um, as I understand it, France won't have nuclear power uh, more thoroughly than Britain did. And one of the results of that is that the power company known in Britain as EDF. EDF. Which is Electricité de France, sells nuclear generated electricity to Britain. Yeah. Despite Brexit. Do you think it still does though? Oh, I think it does. I don't, I don't think Britain could afford to try and go do without it. So the, we um, were in Kent and I lived near, my sister lived near, where they were building um, the converter station at Selinge, which was to bring electricity over from France and convert it um, into I don't know whatever they had to convert it to um, for England so I'm guessing that the converter station despite Brexit that the converter station is still working don't know though this is a lovely view coming up we rarely come over here we used to when we were younger well yeah when we were younger fitter more awake busier not busier but um, had more stamina I suppose we um, if we were over I don't know over in Chauvenet or out doing something quite often we'd carry on and drive over and see if Gail and JP were in and and we don't do that now um, yeah, we don't see them as often. There might be bison over there. I think they are. I don't know whether you can see them in those fields. Yeah, they're bison. I've never been closer than this, though. I think Mark has. You haven't, you? you oh, when you yes. did that American, yeah. not American, that um, reenactment thing or that That's it. war thing. Oh, I was, yeah, given a tour around in the back of a jeep. That's it. And you... Most fabulously uncomfortable. <laughs> and you By saw the, the bison. Way, I trust everybody knows the difference between a bison and a buffalo. You can't wash your hands in a buffalo. Please turn right. Yes. <laughs> well, well interrupted <laughs> Mrs. Navigator. Now turn right and then turn left. We used to get this, this bit wrong. Always used to forget which way to go. Turn right, turn left. Often ended up going miles. Now turn left. Past where we needed to be when we were coming home. So this is very familiar territory for us. Not actually over here, it is for us now, but it wasn't when we were living in the house that JP built. He didn't, but he did quite a bit of work in it. Um, and when I, uh, what I'll do is I'll stop this video when we get to our destination and then I'll do another bit and do a bit as we arrive at the house. I don't know how much I'll do once we're there because... Turn left after 250 metres in Street Road Bark. Because intruding on people, etc. But... Oh, so that's the VN. Oh, Wisteria! Wisteria! Now turn left. 
We're going left. We don't normally go left here. We normally go right. Rudy back. We are heading to Rue de Carrière. Just for your information. One hour more. What are you talking to me now? Well, you know. You're spoiling me, aren't you? Watch this traffic calming. Yeah. It doesn't. Calm. Look at it. it. It blends in. It's a bit like Joe's traffic calming Watch that this. blended in the other day, and we all. A big white lump. Yeah. That's well, tall, isn't it? That house. Yeah. Um, when I put it into the navigation, I want number five when we get there, but it doesn't come up on the navigator. It's an interesting building there. That wooden building. Please turn left after 350 metres onto the D114 and then turn right. Cute. Now it only looks like there's one tower because the other's hidden behind. Now take the second left and then turn right. I'm sure it's over there somewhere. The here we are, Rue, yeah, Rue de Carrière, up here. You have reached your destination road. Yep, we want number five though. You didn't do your job. Okay, gonna stop because I'm gonna have to ask for directions. So we're on our way to Gapy, Gapy, JP and Gales. I wanted to show you this wisteria grown up through the chestnut tree. Isn't that amazing? Okay, continue, Mr. Sofa. So we're looking for a right-hand turn. We're looking for the boulangerie. We've, we've meandered around and got... We, I always get lost in this village, always. It's not very straightforward. So we've already been down here, but you're getting to look at all the lovely little old buildings. We're looking for a right turn and hopefully we might just come across the boulangerie by mistake. There was a sign for the boulangerie which we followed but I got a feeling it's an old sign. So this right turn I think could be a plan. Churches down here, that's promising. That lovely little church. But no boulangerie. We'll have to go empty handed because we're heading back up to the main road now. Oh well. They are lupins. They're sown as um, a cover crop. So I think they just get dug back in eventually.
they're not going to believe it when we get there and say we couldn't find the lingerie. But we used to come down here when we were living there. We came over to get bread. I don't know why we couldn't find it today. seating's still there for when they um, they did the spectacle you know with the um, Gabby on stones in wire crates right the back of the house here. She hasn't gone yet. I knew she'd still be there. <laughs> yeah, very quiet. So this wisteria in a tree <laughs> you're all going to be bored with wisteria now this is where it all began in 2005 that log store wasn't there we came and swapped houses lived in this house i think it probably gives you an idea of why we chose our house
We've spent two idyllic weeks here. It's very much quieter than where we live. As you've seen on the way down, it's all, you know, country roads, no traffic. And this here was a potager. And then in between times, it's been a swimming pool an above ground swimming pool and now it's back to a garden hello pussycat hello and that tree that is heavily pollarded we sat under that under an um with a table and an umbrella and the tree I think that pine has probably grown loads in the 18 years. I don't remember that being quite so dominant, do you? That, ever, that pine tree, very dominant now. And then here is a sheet that belongs with the house, which hadn't been done. It is done now and it's rented out for all of the time to uh, the workers at the uh, temporary workers at the nuclear power station and then in here is JP's workshop he does all of his woodwork in here this wasn't here when we stayed here either massive massive workshop so he's gone to the bakery no doubt to fetch back lovely things to eat. And even though I'm not meant to have gluten or sugar, today will be different. Well, that's the kiwi, as I recall. There's two now. I don't think they've ever had really much fruit on theirs. And of course, we've got our one ki No, that's kiwi. That's kiwi. And it's one kiwi. And I, I don't think they've ever had kiwi fruit on theirs. That, I think, might be pear on that wall. So when we first met them, which was a year later, so they, they went to Devon and we came here. So we met Gail's mum and dad and um, her dad brought us over here the evening that we arrived. We followed him over. Um, but when we first met them, Gail was pregnant. And I think it was about 10 days after we arrived here. Um, she had her daughter, so her daughter is now... <clears throat> will be 18 in July and is in Japan doing whatever it is that she's doing doing in a, like a stage or something or a gap year in Japan because that girl's just gone off to the post office to um, send her a parcel <clears throat> I'll do a very brief kitchen tour and that's it because that's a bit of an intrusion isn't it she said we could go in so when we walked in here to this kitchen <laughs> and saw the size of it, it didn't look like this. It was like, oh my God, they're going to be, when they see our house, they're going to be astonished. So yeah, there we go. So I won't do any more, just do a quick... The corridor down there and at the end of that corridor is the garage and on the left is the toilet in here was an office and still is an office and then there are three bedrooms upstairs and a bathroom and that's a lounge through there there okay that's the end of this vlog <laughs>